Hey everybody, I'm Evan Hammonds for Bloodhorse.com and welcome to After the Wire, which is brought to you by EquaAid, the makers of Bodybuilder and other fine natural products. One of the great challenges of handicapping the Churchill Downs during the early days of the spring meet, stacking up the competition. Horses from the winter racing havens of Fairgrounds, Oaklawn Gulfstream, all come together. And on any given year, one meet is usually stronger than the others. It became apparent early that the form from Gulfstream Park is proving to be the strongest this year, which leads us to Orb and his magnificent victory in this year's Kentucky Derby. The only listed equipment change for this year's Derby was that Todd Pletcher trained Palace Malice would be wearing blinkers. It was also apparent after the opening quarter mile of the Derby that may not have been the right move. At the break, jockey Mike Smith asked for a little run and Palace Malice ran off, setting some ridiculous splits over the sloppy and sealed surface. On paper, Falling Sky, Golden Sense, and Verrazano were the ones that were going to mix it up on the front end. They couldn't get within three lengths of the leader early on. Now, winging it with a 22-2 opening quarter, followed by a second one in 22-3, is no way to win the Kentucky Derby. Orb, on the other hand, breaking from post 16, was allowed to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. And he took it easy while being some 17 to 18 lengths off the early pace while well off the rail. Jockey Joel Rosario waited and waited. Now up front, as they neared the turn, Oxbow was moving very well along the rail, and Javier Castellano pulled the trigger on Normandy Invasion at the time you were supposed to, historically in the Derby. He may have moved just a little early, but he swept to the front in a flash. Now the first six furlongs in 109 of four, there couldn't have been that much left in the tank. Orb, meanwhile, was geared up and ready. Now on the turn, he was moving with will take charge, but he left him pretty quickly and came widest of all into the stretch. An already tiring Verrazano bore out a step or two, but he was quickly bounced back to the pack as Orb put down his left shoulder, pushed him out of the way. Orb inhaled the leaders in a matter of strides, and from there it was just a matter of the winning margin. Both Golden Soul and Revolutionary used the rail as their guide. Robbie Alvarado took Golden Soul off the rail and was able to weave his way past the rest of the staggering crew. Calvin Burrell swerved out and around Oxbow to get up for third, but there was no denying the victory for Orb, Rosario, Stuart Janney III and the Phipps family, and of course, Lexington owns Shug McGahee. Earlier on that week at the post position draw, when Orb pulled the number 16, there was no fretting or wringing of hands. The last six winning derby post positions have been 20, 8, 4, 16, 19, and now 16. In the modern era of the 20-horse cavalry charge, it appears the further out, the better. Orb is the son of Spendthrift Stallion Malibu Moon, and he was the buzz horse of the derby with uh, everybody jumping on the bandwagon after his killer performance on the track Monday before the run for the Roses. And for the 53rd time in 139 races, the favorite delivered. That's a winning favorite rate of 38%, which is higher than racing's norm of about 33%, which is another derby myth dispelled in 2013. It is way too early to tell who will show up in Baltimore, but it looks as if none of the five horses trained by Todd Pletcher will start at Pimlico. Pletcher now is one for 36 in the Kentucky Derby, yet he has only sent out seven runners in the Preakness Stakes. For Bloodhorse.com, I'm Evan Hammonds. I'd like to thank EquaAid for their sponsorship, and I'd like to thank you for watching After the Wire.